Hi, my name's Cathy Millett, and this week we're looking at the difference between UK and US modelling, part one. So this summer in Orlando at the National Model Railroad Association National Convention, I gave a clinic on the difference between UK and US modelling, and I thought it would be interesting to put it up here because it's, it's actually fascinating to see the difference between the two countries in modelling. And the US, you know, we have this view that it's all basement empires. And in the UK, it just isn't. It's all much smaller layouts. So whilst there's extremes in both countries, I thought I would just talk a little bit about the differences you might see. And in next week's um, video, I'm going to talk a lot more about what it is that makes an exhibition layout. So first of all, what are you actually going to learn? Well, I'm going to look a little bit at the general state of the hobbies between the two countries, and then I'm going to look at, finish it off with a look at home layouts and exhibition layouts, and that's where the big differences lie. So first of all, everything in the US is bigger. The country is bigger. Just look at the difference in size. But houses are bigger, almost three times bigger on average. And cars are bigger. So if you're going to transport your layout anywhere, which you do a lot in the UK, well, they're bigger too in the US. So you can get more into your car. So in the UK, you can be quite limited in what you can take. But a layout's bigger. Well, in the US, the majority of layouts I visited are home layouts. They're in a basement. They might even be in a separate building, quite a large one generally. And they have a lot of space. So the average space is much larger, dedicated towards railways than you'll see in the UK. UK layouts, well, we don't have basements. It's very hard to get planning permission to put extra buildings on. And everybody lives in quite small houses anywhere. So there isn't really the land to start putting huge outbuildings to put your layouts into. They might be in a garage, but that's often a single garage. So you're talking eight by 16 foot. Then could be in a spare room eight by 12 foot, or even a loft or attic at 12 foot square. A garden shed, six or eight foot long. None of these are particularly large. And what's amusing is in the US, even our large layouts are classified as small layouts in the railway magazines. US shows are different. It, they're mostly modulars, and they have a lot of group standards as a result. So if you look down here, you can see even though the modules are made up by different people, the track runs in the same space all the way through, so you can join them up. And modulars, well, in the UK, we just don't really have them. What we have in the UK are individual exhibition layouts. Now, these can be really small, 18 inches, or really large, 20 foot plus, but they're one exhibition layout. They're not, they might be made by a group of people, but they're not made to be modular and taking apart. They're made to be one scene or one layout, and it's just broken up. And you can't put them around in a different place because they're put together in one way only. And that means your track can be anywhere because you, you don't have any group standards to meet. So there's more variety of style um, than you'll see in a US exhibition. I said they're really modular. The NMRA in the UK does modular, and modulars are great things for getting people into the hobby. It's not in UK mainstream, though. You just don't see them there. You might see a bit of Fremo coming across from the continent, and Fremo is a European outline. It's, it's like modular, heavy on operations, and I think they're doing their first Fremo meet in the UK in February next year, so just getting going not particularly made a huge impact into the mainstream UK market yet. So these layouts are sectional for transport rather than modular. And they all have things like fiddle yards, which we'll talk more about in a bit. But it's worth saying at UK exhibitions, you don't really see any Lego. US layouts have a different style. Because they're bigger, there's a lot more emphasis on multiple towns and operations. Operations just hasn't really happened in the UK yet. You see it in the NMRA because it's got US influence. Not so much in other places. They might they have ways to run their trains, but it's not the be all and end all of the layout. Um, and it's interesting. So UK layouts, far more likely to be a small branch line, one scene or location, 
And they may even be passenger, which you don't see that much of in the US. And what you'll see is a run through to a fill yard. So the train might come out of the fill yard, go and do some stuff, pick some stuff up, drop it off, people or freight, and then go back to the fill yard again. So what do they actually do in the UK? Um, I'm not going to talk much about the US side of things because this clinic is in a US city and most of the people attending are US people. So they totally understand their own side of the um, country and what they model. So what do we do in the UK? Well, the state of the hobby is really good. There's a lot of people going, still interested in it. It's one of those things you don't admit to having necessarily, but there are young people at the shows and they are definitely people dabbling in it. It's still mostly an older male hobby though, if I admit. And although some are worried about the future, you don't see the doom and gloom that perhaps you see on the US side of the Atlantic. There's still very few women though. I'm still a rarity wherever I go. And um, I could tell you some amusing stories about that, maybe at the end. There are five major railway magazines and they're great quality, really good, interesting magazines. And there's multiple clubs, exhibitions and modelers. One of the key differences is there's a lot of access to real trains in the UK. You can't avoid them really. I mean, I catch a train to work most days when, if I'm working in certain areas, and I would always choose a train over a car. So you see multiple mainline trains, a lot of passenger, not so much freight in the UK. So people go on trains a lot more because they are passenger trains. And if they don't go on real trains, they go on preserved railways, and there are hundreds of them with steam running every day across the summer when the children are off. So family days out to these preserved railways are really common. And the Seven Valley Railway, which is my local one, very, very busy and popular, and the kids love it. So you do get some modern image in the modelling as a result, but a lot of interest in the past because there's so much kept alive through these preserved railways. And basically, um, you do get generations of diesels in the UK, and it looks very different now to when I was a child, but it's more blurred than in the US, and there's more electric locos and electrical multiple units. There's no overarching NMRA equivalent, and they cope fine without one. So there's many scale or prototype specific groups and clubs instead. So they've got P4, which might do fine scale HO, um, it would be double O modeling. And other ones might be Swiss Railway Society where people who are interested in doing Swiss railways might join. The NMA in the UK is a North American modeling focus only um, because that's what it's literature and that's what everything it does is. So that's why people join it because they're interested in North American modeling. There are many geographical local clubs which cover mostly British, but also the wide range of other prototypes too. And there's 13 just in my local county, the West Midlands. Exhibitions are really common in the UK. Um, this weekend or any weekend in the UK, if you look at the magazine's exhibition listings, there are about eight plus exhibitions on. And they might be just a few layouts up to 80 plus, depending on the size. And that means they can be in venues from things like school halls all the way up to large convention centres, but with sports halls being a very common middle ground. Some are specialist shows, so you might get European, North American, narrow gauge or O gauge shows, but most have a mix of layouts and scales and prototypes. So what is the average model and model in the UK? Well, mostly British double O, which is no surprise, but they can do any scale from TT through to garden scale. And they'll do garden scale and an exhibition layout in a couple of feet. It, it, scale doesn't determine the size of your layout. So, and there's a little point to say here that we have smaller sized prototypes generally than the US, which means that we have smaller sized models. So we can get more into a smaller space, which is a good thing because we do have a smaller space generally. They can also model any prototype. There's a real mix of continent, continental European, North American and rest of world. Travel is the number one hobby in the UK and it shows people go on holiday to Cuba and come back and go, oh, I'm going to do a Cuban railway. It's amazing. You get some great holiday railways as a result. You will see European built models as well coming across to the big shows, um, especially as the channel tunnel and ferries allow easy access across. There's a mix of passenger, freight, traction, buses, all sorts, you name it, it will be there. 
It's a lot of narrow gauge, especially Welsh narrow gauge, because it's very easy to fit into the smaller spaces. and It's really interesting. And there's also some modern image, um, but mostly interest in the past. Worth saying a little bit about track work because we are the home of Pico who do beautiful track work and I use it for all of my layouts. But also CNL Fine Scale and other suppliers provide all that you need for handmade, hand laid track. There's no central standards body like the NMRA, but they've always managed to get everything to work. Double O is a slightly narrow gauge um, to allow engines in the old days when they were first starting out to go around tighter 18 inch curves. But nowadays there's a bit of a push in fine scale standard modeling. So you might have scale seven, P4EM and two mil. And these have the right track or the right gauge or whatever for the, the actual scale that they're modeling. And they might have equalized underframes, bullhead rail on chairs, exquisite turnouts. They'll have all the detail that you want. And that's really common. So a little bit about home layouts. So home layouts generally are a bit smaller. We've talked about the space. Um, what people do if they want more space is to go up. So you can see on the right on this picture, there's actually three, three, four levels. So multi-level layouts are very common for people who want to pile a lot in. But actually, if I think of all of my friends that did layouts, I was the only one that did a multi-level. Um, this is a great example of a UK layout trying to get as much as they possibly can into a small space. So this is in a double garage, which will be 16 foot square. The, all of these photos are in that um, garage. And you can see there's three or four levels and behind the scenes, it runs through. It's above your head. You have to stand on things to be able to reach the upper levels. And then there's lower levels and higher levels. And it's just, it's fascinating how much trackage you can squeeze into such a small space. Now, one of the things you might do um, is visit a permanent exhibition. And a lot of people I know have been across to Europe and been to the Hamburg, to the miniature wonderland. And I don't think anything will ever be as amazing as that. So I'm just gonna pick one and show how the Brits might do a permanent exhibition. And that's Pendon. Now Pendon is called a museum and it aims to recapture scenes from the 20s and 30s the English countryside and it's the Vale of the White Horse so it's the area south of Oxford sort of running down and it's beautiful and they use those models to help visitors to understand what it was like to live in that era. So here's some photos of it and you can see it has real high level quality of modelling and it does have trains running through it but there's so much detail in there that isn't about the trains. And they've got thatched cottages, you know, the gardens that they have in those cottages in those days would have had mostly vegetables and things. So you can see the cabbages, the carrots, the individual flowers, absolutely beautifully done. And then they turn the lights off and they have it all lit up at night. And you can see that every single building has a full interior. They have a couple of other scenes. They have some early, very, very famous scenes, um, which uh, famous layouts, which they've preserved. And then they have um, a Dartmoor scene, which is the one on the right with the bridge viaduct running across and beautiful. And you can see in the bottom picture, just the level of quality on one wall that someone would have done is outstanding. But most people actually will see their layouts at a normal exhibition. And we've said they're on every weekend and there's loads of them, but what makes a UK exhibition what it is? Well, the layouts are generally a smaller size. They have this theatre style kind of scenic area with um, wings and they have black top and bottom and everything forces your eye. There'll be a backdrop behind them, um, which is integral. And then there's off in the wings, there'll be fiddle yards. They're normally highly detailed and the standards of modelling are really, really high. So this is a picture, this is actually a continental one, but it was next to me at the last show and I took a picture of it because it sums up what goes into a typical UK layout, exhibition layout. So we've got the black top and bottom faces and pelmets, and you can see there's a title on it, a really nicely done named title. There are LED lights, there are all sorts of different lighting units, and we'll look at those next week. And there's one scene, just one scene, and it is literally a bridge, and the middle section of the bridge moves, and the train comes up, waits or doesn't wait, and crosses the bridge. It has 
curtains beneath, so you don't see any clutter. And it is all very, very highly detailed. If you go and look at it, it's exquisite. So this is basically what a UK layout may look like. It's a world different to a modular layout you might see in the US. So in size, they can be really small. I mean, this is small. And if they're really small, then they'll often be very highly detailed. This layout's only a few feet long. It's large scale, it's a G scale. And you just if you look at the bottom left photo, it's hard to tell that it's a model. But you, can, you do get larger layouts too, often done by groups or clubs, but sometimes done by one or two individuals. The bottom right is just one guy and his wife brought that across from the continent, and it's huge. And it, they're just the quality of the modeling on something that size was outstanding. And you get everything in between. I would say 10, 12 foot is a very common size because it fits in the average car. But if people have smaller cars, they'll have smaller layouts. And exhibitions, the organizers will pay for people to hire vans if they can't bring layouts in their own car. And sometimes some exhibitions will actually have full scale locos there. So this is a preserved railway loco that's been brought in for the weekend just to show it off. There are all sorts of um, eras. We've got steam on the top two, Welsh on the left, um, Owen 30, and that's an American prototype on the right. And at the bottom, you've got the um, modern image. And you have US, we just saw one, but you also have British overseas. The bottom right one is this marketplace where the, you have the canopies and everything's down on the, over across the tracks. The train comes along, all the canopies come up, the train comes through, the canopies go back down. And it's all automated, absolutely stunning. So it's not just standard rail though, people do like to try a few individual things. So these two are inclines, um, quite common in steep areas in the UK. So you've got an incline on the left going down to the sea, and on the right, on the far side of the bridge, there's an incline that ran from the river up to the railway. They're normally finished to a high standard, and you look at the quality of these layouts and they are exquisite and the full detail inside. But sometimes people have done their layout, this one's been done, you can see how beautiful it is at the front, then they decided to expand it. And because it's all jigsawed together, they have to bring the whole lot. And I think this is interesting because you get to see how they actually created and made the layout. And you'll see a lot of foam in UK layouts for, for weight because you've got to carry these. People will do all sorts of themes, nighttime. These are um, two on the left of the same boxed in. So no matter how bright it was at the show, it was always nighttime on that layout. And then the top right one had sheets over the top to keep the lights out. And the bottom one just hoped that it wasn't gonna to be too bright and had some beautiful lights lit up. One of them even had smoke and they had this huge tank of smoke at the bottom. And then it came up through various pipes and outlets and came out through all of these smokestacks and ton. Oh, it's awesome. Really, really beautiful layout. You get quirky ones. These people have a great view at the end of the platforms. So they've cut away the side of their layout so you can look up that view. It's great. And this is, um, I've got a couple of really quirky ones here, and I love these. This is um, the double deck turntable. And this guy had newspapers. He had all sorts sat there with um, you know, maps of it. And there were people coming up going, well, oh, I've been there and I don't, I visited that spot in France and I don't, don't remember seeing a double deck turntable or hearing about one. And he used to have to confess that it was just completely whimsical, but he'd done it so realistically that everybody thought it was real and it was beautiful modeling. It was, and it made me wish that they had had double deck turntables because it was a beautiful model. You get forced perspective. So this is, um, it's in a frame, like a picture. And from the front, you see the people at the front and they're about O scale. And then if you were to pick that person in the middle up and put them next to the people in front of the house at the middle, suddenly he's twice the size and the people get smaller as you go through the frame. And from above, it's not big, it's a couple of foot deep. And it literally is, um, it, everything's been thought out to, to work in perspective. So you've got the coaches aren't square because they don't quite look right in perspective when they run down the back. So a huge amount of thought has gone into this. 
But this is my favourite force perspective layout. It's in fact one of my favourite layouts I've seen at a show. And it's really a working diorama. Nothing at all like you would expect if you were used to US operations driven layouts. But basically in the middle you can see there's a white and yellow rail bus. And that runs from the left to a bus stop which has people sat at it. And whilst it's in front of it, the bus stop spins around, you can't see it, and the people disappear because they're now hidden by the bus stop and they're behind it. The rail bus chunters along through the tunnel. And then you see it run along the bridge, halfway back, and it's smaller. And then it comes out and goes around a mountain, and it's smaller again. And then it runs really in the distance, and it's absolutely titchy. And these are four scratch-built rail buses and it's all triggered through, and it, it really looks like the rail bus is running up the valley into the distance. And it's, it's only a couple of feet deep, and it's really, really cleverly done. And there's a lot of animation as well. Um, there's a dog that barks, there's kids playing, there's actually a small little train going around with a kid playing with it. There's a blacksmith, there's welding. It's, it's really beautiful layout. There is something for the kids, though in my experience the kids just like watching the trains run around and there's always things running for them. But there aren't the giant Legos you might see. What you, on the bottom right you can see this is a beautiful um, Welsh mine quarry and what they do is they run this Welsh dragon across every now and then and the kids know it's coming and they all scream and get very delighted by seeing it and it, it's great fun. And a lot of layouts will let slightly older children play on them um, at the smaller shows especially. You do see the classics, they often have their own shows, um, but this is Hornby 002 rail. I grew up on Hornby 003 rail, um, so this is a bit more modern than even I had, but Hornby 00, great childhood experience for so many people. And it's worth saying that the exhibitions, we don't have clinics, we don't have um, Clinics going on with 60 or 70 people going to a separate room and sitting there and listening. It just doesn't happen. What you do get are loads of people doing demos. And you can see there are people sat here and they're doing everything from soldering brass through to scenery, track work, building things. And you seats there, you just go and sit and you chat to people about things. And these people are so happy to share their knowledge. So you go and, if you've got a problem, you go and find somebody who has a similar always working on an area that you're stuck on and you go and talk to them and there's everything there and it, it's really interesting to talk to people. So that's where I'm going to end it for this week. Next week we're looking at the anatomy of an exhibition layout. Let's look at the UK exhibition layout from the nuts and bolts upwards. <laughs>